Hello everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur. Now today we are gonna be talking about information that I have been getting a lot of emails about, and rightfully so. People have asked me, Kevin, how do you become an elite dasher for DoorDash? And the simple answer is do your job. Like basically just do your job and do it properly. That's the easy answer. However, if you want more specifics about what you can do to obtain this status, I can help you out. And believe it or not, it's in five simple steps. Just five. And for the most part, they're really easy to follow. There's only one step that might be a little out of your control, but even you, but you can still work on it. So let's get down to it. Now, what does it mean to be an elite dasher? It pretty much means a few things. First of all, you're one of the best dashers. Like you are doing your job and you are what other dashers should strive to be like. That also means you qualify for bonus prizes at the end of the month sometimes and extra promotions. And most importantly, you can get um, catering jobs. I don't know why I forgot that. My mom caters all the time. But yes, you qualify for catering. And since catering can be $300 or higher easily, you probably want to qualify for catering jobs because a 10% tip can be $30 or more in less than an hour. And I think we can all agree, that's great. So what are the five steps you need to do to obtain the status? Well, the first thing is you need to complete more than 80 or more deliveries each month. Uh, this might sound difficult, but if you do DoorDash a few nights a week, it's really not that difficult. I mean, I average eight to 10 deliveries a four hour shift in the evening. And I do that like four times a week. So most of the time within the first week of the month, I have taken care of half of the required orders. So that's step one. Step two, accept over 85% of your assigned orders. Now, this can be a little bit tricky and this is why you need to pick and choose your battles. I if the de elite dasher status is important to you, that means that yes, occasionally you're going to have to accept an order from McDonald's that's only $6. It's not fun, but you might have to. Now keep an eye on your acceptance grade because if you have a high enough acceptance grade, this will give you the freedom to not accept some of these orders. And in fact, in some cases, if it's like less than $10 and it's more than seven miles of driving, I typically don't recommend you pick it up even if you are aiming for the elite dasher status because you're just gonna lose money on this. So it kind of just depends what's worth it to you. Do you wanna be an elite dasher or do you wanna make money? Unfortunately, this is the only part of the um, thing that, I mean, you can completely control it, but it can tie your hands on very bad days when you really do not want to drive 15 miles to pick up a Subway sandwich and yes, I have gotten those requests. Um, not blaming anyone in particular, but um, I would definitely like to see the app more narrow when it comes to how far you have to drive. However, in DoorDash's defense, they are very upfront about how many miles you will be driving for that delivery for the whole trip. So there you go. Uh, the third thing you need to do is have zero no-shows. Essentially, that means when your dash starts, start the dash on time. If you need to cancel it, cancel it more than 12 hours in advance because if you cancel the dash less than 12 hours before it starts, that will count as a no-show. So, you know, this is another easy one to solve or to figure out. So uh, basically, you can't have any of those in the month. Now, if there is an emergency, you know what? You gotta cancel. Let DoorDash know, maybe they will make you exempt if there is an emergency that comes up at the last minute. But that's not a guarantee. Otherwise, it's best just not to cancel if you can help it and show up. Um, the fourth thing, yeah, four, is you need to have zero Dasher unprofessional reports. Now this is the one that you don't always have complete control over because I fully believe sometimes you will get a complaint from someone who just isn't happy. Whether, you know, their food is cold, whether traffic kept you, and they'll say you were rude or you were unprofessional, and it, it might not even be true. 
However, you can always treat the customers with respect. If you're late, apologize. Text them in advance if you're going to be late. Let them know what's going on. They're usually pretty understanding. And don't lose your um, temper with Dasher support, even though they can be really annoying. Basically, be as nice as you can. That aspect you can control. Whether or not it'll be good enough for you to avoid these unprofessional reports, it's hard to say. Because, you know, most company stances, if there's not a problem, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. People who work in these industries know that you can do absolutely everything right and still get a complaint. But do the best you can. And the final thing you need to do is less than 5% of the deliveries are reported with missing or incorrect items or cold food. Ice cream notwithstanding, of course. Um, so basically, I don't recommend like when you go and get like a lot of food to like personally open every bag and open every box and touch the food to make sure that everything's there. Uh, that could lead to a lawsuit, so don't do that. However, to the best of your ability, check to make sure everything's there. And if someone's handing you the order, read back the order and say, so you have this, 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 and this, and try to confirm that. So thankfully, they are giving you less than 5%. And chances are you will do more than 100 deliveries. So if you do this, like, if you miss items like three or four times, probably won't be the biggest deal in the world. But that's what you can do to try to avoid that. So to recap, and I will put the uh, instructions on the screen right now, complete m complete 80 or more deliveries, except over 85% of your assigned orders, zero no-shows, show up for your scheduled dashes or cancel more than 12 hours in advance, zero dasher unprofessional reports, less than 5% of deliveries are reported with missing, incorrect, or cold food items. This is what you can do to become an elite dasher. Like I said, it's not terribly difficult. You just gotta do your job. There's only one thing that could be a variable, otherwise everything else is completely within your control. So, what do you guys think? Are you elite dashers? I'd like to know. Comment below, um, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.